Last presentation is given by Dr. Teu Tak from Ulsan, uh, sorry, uh, Ulsan National Institute of Science and Technology. Uh, his presentation, presentation topic is uh, power flattening study of ultra long life cycle fast reactor, UCFR core. Please. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Tail Tak from UNIST, uh, from Korea. <coughs> and my, I'd like to talk about power flattening study of ultra long cycle fast reactor core. And I should mention what is the UCF uh, ultra long cycle fast reactor in the introduction first. And I'd like to talk about the core design strategy to have power flattening shape. And finally, I'd like to show you the result of the, my design. Okay, let's move on the introduction. UCFR is for ultra long cycle fast reactor, and it has 1,000 megawatt electric, and it has 26 megawatt, 2,600 megawatt thermal. So thermal efficiency was assumed at 38.5%. Uh, and the purpose that uh, it was developed with the purpose of the 60-year operation without refueling and once through operation. So for the such long cycle, we adopt the breed and burn strategy with the low energy to uranium as an igniter at the beginning of the cycle. And we use natural uranium or PWR spent fuel as a blanket material. And it once igniting, and it breathes and burn. And this is very good and best. Now we are talking about the radial power distribution. And reference core, you already seen, one zone core is same between the reference core because it has same bottom region uh, material distribution, but Let's see the 20 year. The active core trend is changing because one zone core has sodium center blanket reason. So it's kind of flattened the shape, more flattened the shape than reference core. And let's see, let's see the two zone core. Two zone core has uh, active core in the peripheral region, not center. Reference core and one zone core has active core at the center at the beginning of the cycle, but two zone core and three zone core has active core in the peripheral region. And when we see the sixth year end of cycle, the power shape is very flattened, more than reference core and one zone core. And even the three zone core has active core shape from the center to the peripheral region while the other course has active core only in peripheral region. We can see more easily with following figures. This figure is normalized radial power distribution of each 10 years, every 10 years. As you can see, the reference core, one zone core is same, but two zone core has two parts here, here, and three zone core has three parts here, here, and here. After 10 years, the thing is different. Uh, as you can see, the blue one and red one is different because red one has sodium blanket. And the center picking factor has decreased. And the other figure and the other graph also slightly flattened. And in the 20 years, 30 years, it's very apparent the power picking of center is picked at the center for reference case, but it's not the, for the other cases. And the thing is different and changing after 40 years. <clears throat> when you can see uh, for 60 year, reference core has the lowest picking factor at the center, 
while it has the highest peaking center in the peripheral region. But the three zone core has very flattened shape at the end of the cycle. And one zone core is more flattened than reference, reference core slightly, and two zone core and three zone core. So it's like spectrum. So when we join in more, we can get the more flattened shape, radial power flattened shape. And I, I simply uh, sum up the picking factors every 10 years, and I calculate the average. And this standard deviation is from the average value. And the reference case has the highest standard deviation, and the three zone core has the lowest standard deviation. That is, the three zone core has the most flattened power shape holds through the operation year. And as you can see, uh, if you join uh, more, and the standard, standard deviation getting decreased. But well, this figure is very special because uh, this figure shows the average normalized actual power distribution at the center. So, if you see the reference core, the black one, the speed of center region is fastest. So, at the beginning of the cycle, they are very similar, but as time goes on, the black one, the speed of black one is the fastest because it's not any uh, zoned. And Two zone, three zone core has lower, slower speed of the center. It means that the center of the speed active, uh, the speed of active core at the center is slower, and there is not much difference of speed between the center region and the peripheral region. While the reference core black one has very different speed of active core at the center and the peripheral region. So this figure is very important. So let me conclude. Uh, power flattening has been performed for UCFR 1000, and sodium blanking has been loaded, not only blanket region, but also area region, and area zoning was performed with the enrichment adjustment. And fuel zoning can achieve radio power flattening for example, one zone core has decreased the picking, file, picking factor from 1.6 to 1.1 at the year of 20. And three zone core decreased the picking factor from 1.3 to 1.1 at, at the year of 60. And as I said, three zone core is the most flattened one through the whole operation, whole operation time. And for that this step, uh, I'd like to measure the breeding performance and relativity coefficient and what was studied for Indian safety or something like that. Okay, thank you for your listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Tak. <coughs> so, uh, and I, I have, I'm, my study field is very close to yours, so let me say something, my, me first. Uh, this is a you, you say this is ultra long life FBR, yes. a fast reactor, but this is traveling wave reactor or a candle reactor. It's a very similar concept, yes. Why don't you call, call it? Uh, because, as you can, maybe you know that traveling wave reactor has changed their strategy from the traveling okay. wave to the. How about the candle core concept? Candle core concept is very similar, but Uh, Why do you name different? Uh, there is, no, uh, there is no, no material in this slide, but uh, the different thing is that the design for assembly, design parameter, the detailed design parameter for assembly is very different from the candle. The design for assembly is very similar to uh, U.S. 
<laughs> faster reactors. Okay. okay. And actually, can do utilize the lead. No, maybe there is sodium version. Yeah, but first of all, in in the first study, they use yeah. they use utilize the lead, but first of all, I utilize the sodium. And I have uh, apparent operation here. The purpose of 60 year operation. Mm -hmm. And because of this, there is some limitation. Uh, I didn't mention, but there is some limitation of, uh, you know, the flu fast fluons like uh, HT9. In the yes. candle concept, <laughs> you can extend core life as you like by extending core height. Yes, yes, you can. Okay, so uh, actually, uh, very similar or the same study had done by our group in, and uh, I, we wrote a paper and published in Global 2013. So please check using thorium in the center of the core for the power flattening. And uh, yeah, uh, we made very similar study. Okay. So please check it. And, uh, is there any question or comment? Yes, please. Well, it was a nice presentation. Uh, there were uh, two questions for me, mainly um, the K effector in slide number seven. Yeah. This one? Yeah, this and the subsequent uh, K effective graphs. Now, I see that the maximum which is going to is about 1.030. Now, I, I would like to know if this model which you have used, say, I, you said you have used Monte Carlo code for this. Yes. Uh, and the nuclear data which you have used along with the Monte Carlo code, have you validated it against some critical benchmarks to find out what is the kind of K-effective which you are likely to get with the same model of your uh, code and nuclear data? Have you done some kind of qualification studies? You mean the verification and validation for the code? Exactly. Ah, why, yes. why I'm asking is, for the uh, same kind of materials which you have used in this, if there is any gross change because of your data, and if your k-effective for critical configuration was 1.02 or 1.03, then the entire thing has to be re-looked into. Uh, first so, of all, uh, nuclear data is ENDF7, and the code, the code is MACRAD, which is developed by Seoul National University in Korea. And there is a paper already uh, uh, several years ago published it. So, so what was the typical k effective? It was unity for all the critical configurations? Typical, typical k effective figure of... So what is the typical value which you had obtained? Unity? I mean, why? Because I'm asking is that you have taken everything with respect to k effective unity, right? Sorry, one more. Uh, I think what uh, Dr. Kartigan wants is, uh, if you have validated for a real critical benchmark, yes. and if you have obtained K-effective as unity for those benchmark analysis, then we can lend credibility to this analysis. That's what he's trying to say. So he wants to know uh, in those uh, benchmarks whether you could obtain uh, those K-effectives. Anyway, otherwise, I will move to my questions. <laughs> uh, can I ask my questions? Uh, I would like to know, uh, you know, it would have been uh, nice, uh, quite a few people are talking about uh, uh, like this traveling wave, candle, and now this ultra long life uh, reactors. Uh, we also hear about the conventional fast reactors. So since uh, I had also worked a little bit on uh, those fast idea, uh, I would like to uh, have some more information on very basic things. What is the flux level that you have in this reactor? Because in initially only you are 25 percent of the core is burning. Other core doesn't have any apparently any flux. It doesn't burn. Axial power shape shows only 25 percent of the core is having some kind of burning power distribution. It goes to zero immediately uh, at, at higher heights. Uh, so that means I should know what is the flux level. You are designing a 3,000 
to the 500 megawatt uh, system. That means flux should not be very small also. Typical fast reactor flux is 10 power 15 and something more than that. Then uh, you are using about 750 fuel assemblies. Uh, what is the core inventory like? Uh, that is how much is the seed portion, how much is the blanket portion, and then the enrichment thereof. What supports this much of ultra long life? What kind of fuel fissile inventory is supporting this much long uh, life? information, particularly if it is given as a comparison of existing fast reactor design and your design, then it may make some better feel of what makes you to achieve such ultra long life. Okay, so <laughs> di di discuss later. Thank you. <laughs> okay, it, it's time to cross. So let, let me uh, pass a small gift to him. Thank you very much.